Michigan race review. Let's just get right into it. We had a pretty good race last week at Pocono. Wasn't expecting it because Pocono usually is not the best of races, but Pocono for the track and for the car that we have gave a pretty good race. So hoping for the same this week and at the beginning of the race, before it even started, uh, three JGR cars had issues with inspection. Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, and Eric Jones had to start at the back. Daniel Suarez is the only one that's able to escape it. They had to change the front splitter apparently, so something there was not to NASCAR's liking. And we start the race after a long delay, about I would say three, to, three hours, two and a half hours, two hours, three hours, somewhere around there. Uh, we started the race around 4.35ish and we went racing in Michigan with rain in the forecast for later on, so it would be really risky could they get the race in the entire time would they be able to do that just race the halfway like they did for the Xfinity race on Saturday which I'm just not going to talk about so we start the race with Kurt Busch in the lead Kevin Harvick is trying to close him down and Harvick at the beginning of the race looks like he's able to get to the back bumper of Kurt Busch but is not able to make a pass because of the speeds that they are generating and the dirty air and when you ha when you have cars that are not too far apart like yeah Harvick's a little bit faster but Kurt Busch can definitely hold his own with the clean air Kurt Busch is going to lead most of the first stage and if you're wondering about the speeds they were hitting 220 down the straightaways uh which is risky at that point because 220 is a speed that is very very fast in 2014 they were hitting those speeds and they were going faster in the corners because they had more downforce if you remember they had the larger spoiler on the back a different splitter on the front which gave them more downforce and they also didn't have the tapered spacer so they had the full 850 horsepower to work with and then nascar adds a tapered spacer trying to slow them down for that specific reason of going way too fast at the end of the straightaways and in 2018 we are still hitting 220 miles per hour there are reasons for that, that I'm just not going to get into right now. I'll, I might make a video during the week, but for now, you don't need to know anything about it. Back to the race. The first kind of incident we had at the beginning of the race was not, it didn't bring out a caution, but it was some solid racing between Stenhouse and Austin Dillon, and they got a little bit heated at one another, or it really looks like Stenhouse got heated at Austin Dillon because Austin Dillon pulls off a slide job and it stalls Stenhouse out, and it kind of stalls Dylan out, and then multiple cars pass them because of it. Stenhouse was a little bit upset. My whole opinion on this is, did Austin Dillon touch you? No. Did he pull a clean pass? Yes. All he did was he just completed a successful slide job move at a track where you're going 200 miles per hour. It happens. It happens in dirt racing all the time at 100 miles per hour, and everyone does slide jobs on the dirt. It's expected, and it does check up the car behind. It's not Austin Dillon's fault that the cars are garbage. It's not his fault that he has to work with a car that when he slides up in front of someone the car behind has no air that's not austin dillon's fault he has to make the pass and he made a clean pass why guys like chase elliott when stenhouse did it to chase elliott on the last lap why chase elliott and ricky stenhouse jr are getting upset with this i do not understand and the irony was stenhouse did pull a slide drop off on chase elliott back in i think it was kansas and then dillon just did the same here and now Stenhouse is mad when Elliot was mad at Stenhouse. But overall, in my opinion, no one should be mad. It's passing. It's it's racing. Like, you're making a clean pass. Put your elbows up and try to get them back. He pulled off a clean move on you. He didn't run you up the track. Let's just move on. It's just ridiculous now. Anyways, towards the end of stage one, Matt Kenseth had a tire go down. This would bring out a caution that would lead to like a one lap shootout. Before this lap shootout, Chase Elliott also had a, a tire go down. It was a left to rear. Probably, I don't know the reasons for it, but it was only Chase Elliott, so I don't know if there was debris on the track or if it was a freak incident, but Chase Elliott goes a lap down, or not a lap down, but he has to pit before the one lap shootout. One lap shootout takes place, and Ryan Blaney is now your leader, and he is able to win stage one, get the playoff point. Heading into stage two, we have some other incidents. Most of the incidents were just basically spins. One of them was Daniel Suarez coming out of turn four. He spins it, goes into the grass, but luckily the grass, because it's wet, not too much damage on the car. And then another spin with Bubba Wallace and David Reagan just getting together, racing incident. And then another incident, Kyle Larson in the wake of Kyle Busch, not able to ho hold on to the car. He spins out into the grass, but this one actually does do damage. It did damage the splitter and Larson would end up struggling for a good finish. All that's going down, cautions are going everywhere, rain's coming in, so you have to be very wary about that. At the end of the second stage, Kevin Harvick would win the stage. So guys come down pit road and Clint Boyer, who's running up in the top three as well, decides to take two tires. He was running second, takes two tires. He goes up in a first with rain right on the horizon. Restart happens, couple laps go on. Clint Boyer is able to hold off Kevin Harvick on the outside lane because Michigan's inside lane is does not have as much banking and it's just not a place you want to be. So Boyer holds him off with two tires and then Stenhouse goes for a spin to the outside wall. Casey Kane just got into him and Stenhouse goes for a spin. And then the rain comes. The rain comes, and once the rain came, it was done. There's no restarting the race already too late into the day. Not going to be able to get the track dry in time because Michigan has no lights.
lights. So it's that's it. Clint Boyer wins his second race of the season with Kevin Harvick coming in second. So going to the race results, Clint Boyer, Kevin Harvick, Kurt Busch, that's your top three, all SHR, all Ford. Kyle Busch finishes fourth in the lone Toyota and then surrounding him, all Ford. Paul Menard, Brad Keselowski, Joey Logano, Ryan Blaney, four Fords, all in there. Chase Elliott and Jamie McMurray are able to get in ninth and 10th and be the only two Chevys in the top 10. Good run by Chase Elliott to get back from where he was after the end of stage one. When you see seven of the top eight be Fords, I mean, just going off of Kyle Busch, it, it sounds right because we're racing race cars. <laughs> like you still need a really good engine. You you know, we talk about aero grip and we talk about mechanical grip all the time, but in the end, you, you got to go fast. <laughs> and the Fords were definitely able to give a really good engine compared to Toyota and Chevy. And those Fords are just hauling down the straightaways and they did really well, according to Kyle Busch. Positions 11 through 20, you could see where everyone finishes there. Eric Almirola, Denny Hamlin, William Byron, Austin Dillon. William Byron was running in the top 10 occasionally, uh, but was not able to finish there. Uh, Eric Jones, Alex Bowman, Adrian Almendinger, Truex. I did not see much of Truex all race. Uh, so maybe one of you guys could tell me what was going on with Truex. I just, uh, I didn't see him. I don't think he qualified all that well and he never got up towards the front. It was just an off race. Bubba Wallace, Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson had a uh, forgettable race, to say the least. And then 21 through 30, you guys can see the results as well as 31 through 40. You'll see some noticeable names through these positions. Kyle Larson, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., they had their share of incidents throughout the race. Daniel Suarez had his share of incidents throughout the race, and then the rest of your results. I personally don't think it was a great race. There was a good amount of cautions. There was some, some spinning and there were some decent fights on restarts. But once, you know, if, if people weren't spinning out and you saw the green flag runs, it was not going to be great. Uh, it's just, it's a combination of things. Obviously the track, it's been seven years since they repaved it and it isn't really aging. Uh, the second lane is still the dominant lane. I don't know the reason to that. I'm not sure why it's not aging. I'd love to know or get an answer for that because you would think that, you know, once the track wears, it's seven years. That's seven winters. You know, the asphalt should be able to be, be wearing down a little bit and it's just not. So the lane just stays in that second lane. And then because they debanked the first lane, you can't really go on the bottom. You can't really make passes there because it's debanked. So not the best track with not the best car. Again, I'm not going to talk about the Xfinity Series package. Maybe I'll talk about it in the middle of the week. You guys, if you follow me on Twitter, you know very well how I felt about that. So for the end of this video, I'm just going to say it was maybe like a 4 out of 10. And I'm going to leave you with a clip from this weekend from a driver who is one of the leaders in the garage. I'm just going to let him end the video. But before that, I just want to say, if you guys like the video, make sure you hit that like button if you're new to the channel. Make sure you subscribe. Comment down below what your thoughts are. Obviously, all have opinions, so comment down below. Uh, and we are also reaching near 20,000 subscribers. I, uh, I I, mean, I have to make a separate video to say how much I appreciate that. Like, I, I know it's cliche that everyone says thank you, but I'll find a way to really show my appreciation there. So, yeah, that's the end of the video. And take it away, Kozlowski. You know, credit to, to Marcus Smith, Don Hawk, and SMI. They found a great package for the All-Star Race. Um, I think that package needs to remain solely at the All-Star Race. Um, I think that uh, a lot of the drivers in this sport are in a position where they chose cup racing because of the demands that the cars take to drive. Um, and I think there's a lot of fans that come to our races um, expecting to see the best drivers. I think if you put a package like this out there, uh, like what we had at the Charlotte All-Star Race, on a consistent basis that the best drivers in the world will no longer go to NASCAR. They'll pick a different sport. Um, that won't happen overnight. That'll, that'll happen over time. And I think that would be a tragedy to this sport because the best race car drivers want to go where they can make the biggest difference to their performance. Um, and there's no doubt that you can you make less of a difference um, at with that configuration, with that rules package. So um, with respect to that, I'm, I'm you know, Thankful that it improved the, you know, watchability, the, the show, per se, for the All-Star Race. I think that th those are important things to do. But I think we should always be mindful of our responsibility as a sport to make sure that best drivers are able to showcase their talent. Um, and I'm apprehensive that coming with a package like that on a larger scale for the sport will, in time, deteriorate the ability for drivers to make a difference and that they will look for other racing venues to achieve that. Um, so it's, it's a very interesting trade-off. Um, you know, I, I think of the three things that I like to see at a race, and I think of fast cars. I think I want to see the best race car drivers, 
and I want to see a great finish. Those are the three things I want to see. I think that package um, achieved one of those three and hurt the other two. Uh, and I, in that sense, I, I consider it a net loss uh, overall. Um, so I know that's a tough question for NASCAR to really wrap their heads around. Um, it's a tough question for us to wrap our heads around. But believe me, I, I, I saw the, the fan videos of people in Charlotte standing on their feet. Um, and, but part of that is because of the legacy that the sport has to have the best drivers. Um, and I think over time that will deteriorate. I think we've seen that with IndyCar. Um, it was pretty obvious to me that you know a decade ago, if you wanted to see the best racing in the world, it, it was – Quite honestly, it was in IndyCar. They ran 3-4 wide and uh, put on some great shows. Unfortunately, long term, that didn't translate to the fans. That didn't translate to better ratings than NASCAR. Um, there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, I would speculate that some of it has to go back to the fact that the best race car drivers in the world were here in NASCAR. And, and we saw that when IndyCar drivers came over here and didn't find success. And they weren't just any IndyCar drivers. They were some of the best. Um, so with respect to that, I think we just we have to tread very lightly with the next steps of this sport. Um, I like the idea of picking one or two races and, and running this that package. Uh, I think that makes sense. Uh, but if we, um, you know, overdose uh, on on that particular format of racing, uh, it will have, in my opinion, some severe long-term negative effects. So it, it's a it's a very um, Interesting equation to see play out. You know, we're all watching together how it's going to play out. Well, I think we all have a little role from the media to the drivers to the fans, et cetera. Um, but I, I think, you know, long term, if, if you want to know what the all-star package would look like if it was ran in NASCAR full time, look no further than IndyCar. They've already proved it. Um, and they, they had great racing. They had a number of fatalities associated with that racing that was unfortunate. They had a, a short, unsustainable boost uh, and their, their fans for those races when they first went to those packages, and then it trailed off. Um, so with respect to that, I, I think that's, that's where I, if I was forecasting to the future, that's, that's how I see it. Um, but I don't know what decision NASCAR was going to make. It's their, it's their decision. All I can do is give my input, and uh, at this time, those are my strongest thoughts.